our system is one that hurts people to show that hurting people is wrong. Why? Why do we have to do that? What do we get out of that pound of flesh that we take from people? What is it that tells us we have to inflict some kind of harm to someone? We have to hurt them for them to feel, you know, to feel anything or to feel the impact of their actions. It disheartens you as a parent uh, when your children are in the judicial system. You know, you teach them what to do at home, advise them what to do at home. Whether they listen or not, when they leave, it's totally up to them. What we were dealing with in the, the current system was we were bringing kids in, we were giving them labels, and sending a message, you're a criminal. Uh, in fact, we see a lot of uh, kids who come back into the youth justice system over and over again, and we see underlying trauma with respect to uh, these kids. I see these kids uh, coming from under-resourced families. We needed to look at something more, and we began to sort of explore a, a much more of a relationship model from the view, vision of the community. So we started out by convening a Reimagining Justice for Youth leadership team, which was comprised of county attorneys, public defenders, and impacted community members. And as we progressed, we reached out to representatives from law enforcement, social services, and public health. And our goal was really to understand the impact that our current justice system was having in our community and also to engage researchers from the University of Minnesota who are youth development experts who can really help us analyze our data and understand what it tells us to inform how we're responding to young people um, to help keep our community safe and help young people succeed. One thing we know from research as well is that punishment really shuts down young people's ability to learn in a moment. It moves them from kind of the logical, uh, connected part of their brain to a real reactive part of the brain that just kind of puts them almost on the defensive and this real inability to, to sit with what they've done and grow, you know, like connect with the emotional elements of that in a positive way. And so that's another reason why this restorative approach is so much more effective because we're actually accompanying young people through this really hard process of learning what it means to be accountable. I was a very hostile person, a very angry kid, and I was just always ready for the rage. So at the flick of a switch, I would be, you know, it was so easy for me to take something small and blow it up and make a fight out of it, and so I would always fight. I had a stealing problem as well. I um, got caught stealing before, and it just kept me in a lock. I stayed in this place, and I got on probation, and although that was the consequence of it, it didn't teach me much at all. The lens that I was mentored in, in terms of when I am asked to um, facilitate a restorative practices conversation, a circle, whether it's to build community when there's been harm, to build relationship, um, it's a strength-based approach. It's um, looking at the individual as a human being and utilizing the youth's strengths, the family's strengths, the community strengths. With the circle, they've allowed themselves to come in and actually create a stronger bond with my daughter and myself. So the overall vision for Reimagining Justice for Youth is really simply to get better outcomes for our community and for the families and youth uh, that are coming into the system and, and also for our victims. I think that um, historically we have built a system that is just naturally developed and oftentimes we don't actually think about uh, what we actually get from our youth justice system, whether it's delivering on accountability, whether it's delivering on uh, doing right by the victim, whether it's delivering on uh, rehabilitation. One of the things that stands out as well, we always ask the question, who was impacted by your actions? And first it's a short list. Well, I was, and maybe my mom. But then when we talk about that, and they can name all of these layers of people and, and places that are impacted 
from the dog and the cat all the way to the judge and the jury, that we are all impacted by those actions. And that gets them thinking about what would I do in the future? Because we all share in what happened. And so we're all a part of the solution as well. Can we accomplish accountability without punishment? Some people say no. They're like, no, nah, if somebody does that to me, they gotta do, they gotta get something, they gotta pay, right? Well, haven't we hurt each other enough? Everybody is hurting. So how do we stop that whole cycle of anger for anger, you know? And they say, you know, if we all do an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, the whole world will be blind and toothless, right? So um, I just think about that and how we need to look at accountability quite differently. You know, our efforts uh, in trying to bring a better version of justice for the youth and families that we're serving in the system um, by bringing in community to be a part of that process, by employing uh, restorative practices, uh, and having a community-based meaningful accountability, uh, that at the end of the day is going to deliver uh, a better version of community safety uh, that we all want and that we all need. My hope for the justice system is that we will actually get a real voice that is actually heard.